I was able to play Greedfall at Gamescom, the official Twitter account posted proof of that and I'm actually really glad that I got an invite to check the game out. The trailers namely look very promising and I'm always up for a single player RPG in a new fantasy world, but does Greedfall play as good as it looks? And we can't ignore the fact that the previous games from this developer received mediocre reviews. Well, I'm happy to report that I'm intrigued. I think they might be onto something here if you set your expectations for this game right. In this video, I want to share some awesome things I learned about Greedfall, my impressions, and I will show you new B-roll footage that they sent to me. So let's get into it. It would be awesome if you could leave a like on the video as it shows your support. And let's go. I want to start with a quick introduction for if you haven't watched my previous video. So you start this game on the old continent that is now plagued by a disease and it's your goal to find a cure on the newly discovered island called Tear Freddy. And there are many creatures on this island that are actually inspired by the area that they are in. And in my gameplay demo I could fight this swamp monster that is actually one of the mini bosses in the game. So as I told you in my previous video, Greedfall is not an open world game but it actually has different regions that you can explore and that are linked to each other. Kind of comparable to Borderlands. You see the map of one region that I could explore here with your familiar question mark, so the points of interest. Like I could find a skill altar nearby and if I went there I got an extra skill point and you see this one on the legend too. It also says arena on the legend, so something you can find in each city tavern. Sounds very interesting, could not check it out. You also see some travel spots that you can use to travel between the regions. And this icon here tells you where your quest objective is. And what is not noted on the map for as far as I could see are these special mini bosses that you can find in some of the regions. We should expect a bunch of them in the full game according to the developer. And I also learned that Greedfall will have 7 true bosses in the game. So this swamp monster is just waiting for you in the water and you can easily miss it if you don't explore the region. I was level 15 when I attacked it and I was playing on the normal difficulty. There's also a hard difficulty, even an extreme difficulty for if you want that real challenge or there's also an easy mode that you can choose from. On the normal difficulty this boss was manageable but I think I had some pretty nice gear too. And your companions of course help you as well during the battle but the boss would still focus a lot on me. Luckily you got a chance to dodge away and then strike when the boss is recovering. You got your light attacks, a heavy attack and also four action buttons that are linked to your d-pad. You see a better example here in other gameplay so you can really put like shortcuts to spells and items there however you want. Like I could shoot in my play session with my gun by pressing the upper arrow on the d-pad and I had a mana potion on the down button. But you can also pause the game mid combat and then select the item that you want. In this b-roll they are using a spell with the pause button but it was also mapped to the right button on the pad. Interesting is that doing light and heavy magic attacks functions the same as a weapon so you need to have a ring equipped to be able to do them. And these regular attacks still cost mana and that's of course the blue bar under your health bar. So if your mana is low then you want to switch to another weapon that you have in your second slot and you can easily switch between them with one press of the button. And before I knew it I had this powerful flaming sword to slash the enemies with and it felt pretty great. Also the heavy attack can stun the enemy so then you can quickly follow up with some light attacks. And it's also smart to look at the attack patterns of the enemies so you know when it is the right time to counter. The only thing that I'm worried about is the variety in combat. Like will you not be using the same attacks for the whole game? I namely played a magic character and on level 15 I already had some skills in Lux and one is just doing your basic attack so that one doesn't really count. I also already had the cool looking dash, not really a spell though that you can use against the enemies and I also had the close ranged shadow burst skill in Lux. So then you still have three magic skills from the looks of it and one of them is also not really an active skill because it immobilizes the enemy so that it will not be able to attack for a really long time. So then we only have two more magic skills that weren't unlocked. So I really think that in the end you will be forced to kind of go and make a balanced character 
and mix and match between magic and a two-handed skill line for example or the trap skill line. I'm just not sure if the limited amount of active abilities is enough. By the way, these smaller sort of things that you see in the skill line are more enhancements of the active abilities. I by the way learned that there is no max level and that around level 90 you have unlocked every skill. But they noted that you will be around the level 40 to 50 at the end of your playthrough. So it will be possible to unlock everything but then you have to grind a lot and there will be no new game plus sadly. But then I want to go back to that mini boss because what I also liked is that this enemy gave some very powerful loot. It's one of the ways to get the legendary items in the game actually fight these bosses. So in this case there was a corpse on the ground that you see briefly here that I could loot after I killed the boss. And this body gave me two legendary items and a treasure key for a treasure that was somewhere in the game. So that's your goal to find this chest and get the extra loot by looking at clues from this character like what faction is he from. He was a captain, okay, so maybe there's a fort nearby with a sort of chamber where we can find this chest. It's pretty cool stuff. From the boss himself I got an obsidian crafting material that is needed to craft or upgrade some of the best items. And you can do that at the workbench in your camp, so you can set up a camp near a campfire and then go craft or upgrade things. And what I really liked is that you can also do this while fast traveling. So when you select a location that you want to go to, you will not see a loading screen but instead teleport to a campfire and then you can also check out the workbench or talk to your companions while you wait for the game to load. So if the game is done then you can choose to leave the camp or you can also stay here and continue your conversation with one of your companions for example if you want. I briefly talked to one of them and then I already got a new side mission that will help me explore the background of this character and also strengthen my relationship with this character. At Gamescom they revealed a new companion trailer showcasing the five companions that you will meet along the way and they seem to unlock pretty early because when I played on this level 15 save I already had 4 unlocked and was about to meet the 5th one. You can only have 2 with you at one time and they should fight differently so you can choose them based on their combat skills. But what seems to be more important is their impact on the story or their take on a certain situation. Sometimes the game requires you to have a certain character with you for a certain mission because of their importance. But the developer assured me that you can mostly select the companions that you want and then hear their take on a situation. Like a good example is here when we reach this abandoned camp for one of the main story missions. We would arrive here and you already hear Kurt share his Thoughts. I come here in the open wind. It was definitely set up by scholars. So obviously, when you don't bring Kurt to this camp, then you will not hear his thoughts. So to search the camp for the missing people that we were supposed to look for for this mission, you have to go to the highlighted areas and then you can hear your main character speak. It's kind of like the investigation areas from Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And here we hear another take, but this time from Siora, who as a native on this new island can give you some insights in the clans that live there. Yes, it is the art of the Donegada. One of the Valley Clans was here. So it's unclear how big the story impact will be depending on the companions that you choose to take with you, but these small lines that give you more insights are already pretty cool. Before going to this abandoned camp you could sneak past this bear and with one press of the button you would go into this sneaky stealth mode and could hide in the bushes for example to ignore the enemies. I never did this though in my play session because I found killing these creatures too much fun and it will also give you XP and leather for example that is needed to craft things. I was able to play the game for around 30 minutes and I have the idea that I barely scratched the surface. Greedfall should be around the 30 hours to complete but I totally feel that it could be way more if you really fully explore the worlds and all the different systems. Get all the legendary weapons and armor sets for example that are linked to the three factions. 
or take out all the mini bosses in the game. I was even told that you could spend some hours in the opening area before leaving on a boat to Tear Freddy. So there's a lot of side content on the old continent from the looks of it. And you cannot go back to it. Once you go to the islands, there's no going back. I had really fun playing Greedfall and I want to explore it more. But the things that I'm most skeptical about are kind of hard to see in a short period of time. The voice acting, for example, seems fine for your main character that can be a boy or a girl and has a different voice depending on the choice. Your companions also seem to be fine, but when I encountered some random NPCs, I was not really impressed at all. And in a game where you'll be talking a lot to different characters, it can totally take you out of the experience if their voices or dialogue are not that good. Your companions also have these lines when fighting, or actually they seem to have one line that already got annoying in the short b-roll that I received, let alone in a 30 hour RPG. Move away. Things are about to get dicey. Move away. Things are about to get dicey. Move away. Things are about to get dicey. I think it's just good to set your expectations. It seems to be a great achievement for a small team of 35 people that work at Spiders, but a small team and a limited budget also means that it will not be as fully fledged as similar style of AAA RPGs like a Dragon Age game or Assassin's Creed Odyssey. While there are still almost asking for the full price of this game, it's $50. Just things to keep in mind, but as I said, I am intrigued. I want to explore more and also tell you more of what I think as we get closer to the September 10th release date because that is when the game will be out on the PS4 PC and Xbox one so totally subscribe for more on Greedfall if you have some questions about the game then totally leave them in the comments down below and then I might include it in a future video and talk about that question or I will leave a short reply under your comment if I don't know the answer then I can of course not reply with an answer Either way, like this video to support the channel, let me know what you think of Greedfall as well. And you can check out my previous video on the game too, with a more brief overview of what you can expect. For now, I will speak to you next time, and goodbye.